Welcome back again. Present value refers to the earlier value on the timeline. So oftentimes this is at the beginning of the investment horizon. Um, in this chapter, we are working with lump sum, meaning we only have a single cash flow. So you can think of it as oftentimes a present value um, is the money that you start. You know the amount in the future. You want to find out how much that is worth today. So that's the present value. So for example, you have an opportunity to make an investment and they promise that they'll pay, the investment will pay you $100,000 in 10 years. Well, how much would that investment be worth today? So the question or the, what the problem you're trying to solve is how much is that amount today? Another way to think of the investment problem or the present value problem and the most common use is a retirement planning or a life planning problem. Um, let's say you want to buy a house or you want to buy a car. How much do you have to invest today in order to reach that amount in the future? So the present value formula is actually derived from the future value formula. This is our general future form value formula. And all, all we have to do is just to arrange it to get our present value. So to rearrange it, we can divide both sides. We can just cross multiply. So we take this factor and cross multiply or we divide both. So this becomes the denominator this crosses out. So the present value is equal to the future value divided by the interest factor. So simply by rearranging it, we get our present value formula. Because we use the present value so often, it's useful to have both formulas handy. The process of finding the present value is called discounting. So when we discount a cash flow, we are finding the present value of the cash flow. So you'll hear the term discounting a lot in finance. Um, the reason is because finding the value is the most important task in finance. In fact, when you hear the term value, it's usually referred to as the present value, unless if you're referring to the future value will make that very explicit. So when you hear the term present value, we are, or the term value, we are really talking about present value. If we want to refer to it as future value, we will um, say that specifically. And this factor here, this is considered the interest factor. So this is how much the interest will add to the value or discount from the value given combining both the interest rate and the time period. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say you have, you need $10,000 in one year for the down payment of a car. You can earn 7% interest. How much do you need to invest today to reach that goal? So we can use the formula. The formula says that, so the information we have, so it's just solving problem. If we are, we are asked to find the present value, so in order to find the present value, we must know at least three factors. That is the future value, the interest rate, and the investment horizon. So we know, the future, we know this is a future value because it's $1,000 in one year. So we can also draw the timeline. So this is for just one year. So the time period is one. We need $10,000 in one year. So the $10,000 is our future value and the interest rate is 7%. So we have all the information we need to solve this problem. Now, if you don't already start on your formula sheet, this is the time to do so. You can add to that. So we know the formula for the present value is the future value, which is $10,000 divided by one plus the interest rate. So again, since we're using a formula, we'll use decimal. And one plus 0.07 or 7% discounted back one year. So you can solve and see if you get the same answer. So the present value discounted back one year is $9,345.79. I hope you get the same answer. If you don't get the same answer, pause your calculate, pause the video and try it again until you get the right answer. 
Now, what, is, what we want to do is to see, well, what does this mean? The good news is that with present value, we can actually check our answer. Because if we have $9,345.79, we can find out how much interest we earn on, on that amount. And when you add the interest you earn to 9, 9, uh, 7% at $9,345, you will get back $10,000. So we can actually check our answer to make sure that we did it correctly. We will also use our financial calculator to solve this problem. So to find the present value, we need the information. So this is what we have from before. So make sure that in addition to clearing your register using this, you also need to clear the TVM. So second function, clear TVM. So to solve for the present value, we need to know the other three factors. So we have the time period horizon, which is one year. We also have interest of 7%. And we have $10,000 is our future value. So we are putting that in as an info, which, is, which when you compute the present value, so compute present value, you show it as an outflow. Um, so that's just the assumption made by your calculator. So we're assuming that we're going to invest $9,346 today at 7% and after one year, we'll be able to have the $10,000 that we need. Okay, now that you have um, gone through the first example, let's go through another one just for practice. Let's say you want to begin saving for college and you know that in 17 years you need $150,000. So what we have here is an amount that we know, $150,000 in, in 17 years. So if you draw the timeline, again, we want to get used to using our tools, our investment horizon is 17 years. And $115,000 occur at this point in time. So since this occurs later on in the timeline, at the end of the investment horizon, this is our future value. We believe that you can earn 8%. So let's put that down there as well. So 8%. The question is, how much do you need to invest today? So when we use the timeline, today is oftentimes what year zero represent. So we are asking how much money will, do we need to invest today? So today is present value, the beginning of the investment horizon. So here we have our timeline. We know our problem. Our problem is we need to find the present value. That's what we are asked to do. And we have all the information that we need. We have the investment horizon. We have the future value that we are looking for. And we also have the interest rate. So we can use the tool that we have learned and try it out on this problem again. So we know that our problem, so pause the video, give yourself um, a few minutes and write down what you are asked to find, what information is available and how, how you would solve it. Ready? Okay, so we can use one of two approach to solve this problem. The first is using the formula. So we, again, you can ref reference your formula card. You know that present value is equal to the future value, which in this case is $150,000, divided by one plus the interest rate. So one plus 8%. And this is over 17 years. So we can solve for that and it turns out to be $40,540. Okay. The second approach that we learn is to use your financial calculator. So if you use a financial calculator, we still need all the information. And this is where using the timeline is really helpful because then we have all the information handy on the timeline and we can enter that into the calculator much easier. So we know we have $150,000, which is our future value, and 17 years is the investment horizon and an interest rate of 8%. So let's call up our calculator. 
Again, remember that we want to use second function CreateVM to create a register. So $150,000 is future value. We have 17 years is our invest investment horizon, so that's N. And 8% is our interest. And we are computing the present value. So not surprisingly, we got the same answer. But since I put in $150,000 as positive, the resulting value from the calculator is negative $40,540. And that means that we are putting away, we're putting away $40,540 and outflow today in ex so that at the end of 17 years, we'll have $150,000. Hopefully, I believe you're all more comfortable and um, with computing present value. So the next example, I'm going to have you try to do this. So go ahead and write the timeline. Say your parents set up a trust fund for you 10 years ago, and today is worth $19,000. If the fund earns 7% 7 per year, how much did your parents invest 10 years ago? So pause the video now and do the following. Figure out what you are asked to find, whether you're solving for present value or you're solving for future value, and what information is available. So the first step, as I said earlier, is to draw the timeline. So pause the video now and go ahead and draw your timeline. Ready? Okay, so here we go. Even though this is expressed in past tense, our investment horizon is still 10 years. And we know that our interest rate is 7% per year. And we know that at the end, so even though it says $19,671 today, you can write everything in negative number, or you can include that as present tense. So we have $19,671.51 at the end of this investment horizon. So because they occur at the end of the investment horizon, we still consider that a future value. And what we are asked to find is the present value. So the information that we have available is the investment horizon, the interest rate, and also the future value. And we put all of that on the timeline. So you can solve it using the formula. And I'll just go ahead and show you the answer. Hopefully, you get the right answer. So if you start with $10,000 investing for 10 years, you'll get $19,671. And I, uh, so go ahead and also solve this problem using the financial calculator, and you should get exactly the same answer as well. So now you have a chance to practice three various problems for present value. Um, hopefully you have your financial calculator master at this point. Now you saw that with different, we saw a similar relationship between future value and interest rate. And we also have a similar relationship for present value, interest rate, and investment horizon. However, notice that your present value, in this case $1,000, is almost always less than your future value. Why is that? If you think about the relationship between present value and future value, your future value is typically a goal that you want to reach. So either you're saving for retirement or you're saving for a house or you're saving for a college. If you know that the future amount is say $150,000, the more you can earn in interest, the less money you have to put aside today. And the other uh, more com common example is in retirement. If let's say you want to have a million dollars to retire, the longer you have to save, meaning the younger you are and the sooner you start, the less money you have to put aside today to reach the same goal. So when you think about the important relationship between 
interest rate and investment horizon and present value, they are the opposite. So one of the good things in finance is that when we try to understand this relationship, the easiest way to do is to go through a numerical example. So we can actually have the numbers in front of us. So in this example, we ask, what is the present value of $500 to be received in five years or in 10 years? And the discount rate is 10%. So we have two, two problems here, actually. In the first problem, we have the investment horizon is five years. In the second problem, the investment horizon is 10 years. So we are asking to find, so what is the present value? We are asked to find the present value. The $500 is the future value in both cases. So based on what we talk about intuitively, we said that if we have 10 years to save until we have $500, we can put aside less money today to reach the same goal. So if you have 10 years to earn interest, we don't need to put aside as much money today than if we have only five years to earn interest. So let's take a look and see if that is the case. So we can start with the five-year problem. So if we have five years, the present value will be $500 divided by one plus the interest rate, which is 10%, raised to five years. And that turns out to be $310.46. We can do the same thing for 10 years. And the only thing that we need to change is the number of time period. So instead of five years, we'll have 10 years. Everything else is the same. So go ahead and do those calculations, and we can check your work. Did you get $192 if you do 10 years? So this is what we expect, right? The longer we have to save or the longer we have to earn interest, the less money we have to, to put aside today. Now, let's take a look at the relationship between interest rate and the present value. So we have a similar problem. Again, we use $500, and this time the investment horizon remains fixed at five years. But we have two interest rates. One is a 10%, one is a 15%. So pause the video now and compute the present value. What did you get? Of course, the first one we get the same. $500 at 10% for five years is $310. But at a high interest rate of 15%, the present value is smaller. So once again, to get $500 in the future, if we can earn a higher interest, we can put aside less money today. We can see this relationship in a graph just like we did with future value. So if you earn no interest, then it doesn't matter. You will need $1,000, you will need to put aside $1,000. But once you start earning interest, the longer the investment horizon, the less money you have to put aside today. And of course, for the same investment horizon, the higher the interest rate, the less money you have to put aside today. So we said that there's an inverse relationship between present value and investment horizon and interest rate. So the inverse relationship means that the relationship is negative. So now that you have a chance to um, practice this, let's do one more practice. So take out your calculator and um, work out this problem and see if you get the right answer. So for the first problem, the answer is 12,000 $594.29. Did you get that? If not, try it again. In the second answer, the second question, the answer is $11,907.48. And 
and the difference between the two is six hundred and eighty six dollars and eighty one cents okay congratulations you have mastered the present value